They were given a playbook and they believe that by following it, they can crash the markets and make the US dollar worthless. They have a whole scenario worked out. Are they intentionally trying to move our economy in that direction? Yes, but I cannot say for certain if they will be successful in crashing the US dollar, as their playbook may not entirely work as planned. There's something I want you to keep in mind. They're not the ones in charge here, and I'll explain why. I was telling you about a highly accurate model developed by a political scientist named Josip Kugler, who used to head the political science department at Claremont. This model predicted that if we could expose corruption in just one country, we could establish the rule of law. The United Kingdom was the country that was predicted to do that, but it's not the only one. For example, I testified as a witness at the European Parliament in 2011. I have been reaching out to Congress about corruption for many years, even before I was fired in 2007. Senator Lugar wrote three letters to the World Bank on my behalf, asking them not to terminate my employment. He was disappointed when I was fired, because he knew very well what I was going to discuss with Congress. I stayed inside the real bank, which is what a lawyer is supposed to do. I went up the corporate ladder to reach the audit committee. At that time, the Dutch government wrote a letter to the world asking the audit committee to investigate the problem. Pierre de Caen, the chairperson of the audit committee, was from the French government. However, Mr. Du Quest did not investigate the problem in the audit committee. He asked for a study to be conducted on the Institutional Integrity Department, which was the World Bank's anti-corruption department. Paul Volcker was brought in to conduct the study, but instead of conducting a genuine investigation, he produced a misleading report that was more of a cover-up than an actual study. In the meantime, the staff members of the Institutional Integrity Department tried to inform Paul Volcker about what was happening, but they were fired and intimidated. Common Dreams, a newspaper, published an article about this issue, revealing the attempts made by the department to inform Volcker. Eventually, those people were compensated for their losses. However, despite the evidence, the Volcker panel study claimed that there was no corruption within the World Bank, and the U.S. continued to pretend that everyone believed it. At that point, the president of the World Bank, Paul Wolfowitz, had given a significant raise to his girlfriend, Sheikh Reza. The board did not approve of this decision and as a result, they were planning to terminate Paul Wolfowitz from his position. Do you happen to recall the scandal involving Elliot Spitzer, the former governor of New York, who had to resign from office after being caught visiting the New York madam? Well, it turns out that some of the executive directors, specifically 25 of them, represent the countries of the world with the biggest aid economies. Each country has its own executive director, including Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and Japan. However, the remaining countries share executive directors. Unfortunately, these executive directors were being blackmailed because some of them had visited the New York madam and deposited money in their bank accounts, which made them vulnerable. I came to know about this incident during my time in Holland. Besides studying law at Yale Law School, I also pursued economics at the University of Amsterdam. I am fluent in Dutch, which helped me understand when the representative of the Dutch government, Herman Thankful, mentioned that the board was being blackmailed. The next day, his predecessor, Ad Milker, who had already resigned from the World Bank board, was working with the United Nations Development Program. During a television show in Holland, an individual named, um, Ad was asked if he was being blackmailed. He responded by saying that he was a boring person, but he knew other people on the board who were very upset about it. When he returned home, he visited the Senate, and a staff member of Senator Lugar advised him to go to the Treasury Department. He also wrote to the Dean of Yale Law School, expressing his concern about blackmailing other countries' diplomats. I particularly dislike the fact that Paul Wolfowitz was able to give his girlfriend a pay raise, which had no relation to national security interests. It's not in the national interest to blackmail other countries' ambassadors. I had warned Chuck Hagel, who was then the senator of Nebraska, that this behavior would have consequences and that we were at risk of losing our leadership. 
there used to be an agreement called the Gentleman's Agreement between the United States and Europe. This agreement stated that the president of the World Bank would always be appointed by the United States, and the managing director of the IMF would always be appointed by Europe. Although these two organizations seem separate, they are essentially two sides of the same coin and have the same board of governors, which consists of ministers of finance or development from around 188 countries. Those individuals gather twice a year, and amongst them is the resident board. I explained that the World Bank's internal rules and the analysis of the rule of law signify that we are at risk of losing our leadership position. I was certain that my warning would suffice, but due to the presence of the superentity, as I was previously discussing, it seems that it may not be enough. Multiple levels of corruption have hijacked not only the World Bank, but also the United States and many other countries' governments. While you were working at the World Bank and witnessing the multi-level corruption, did anyone approach you with an offer to join the Ponzi scheme? It's only recently that people have started offering me anything. Every time this happens, it's not that I'm incorruptible, it's just that I have a big mouth. They offer me something that seems attractive, but before I know it, I end up telling someone else that I've been offered something. To better understand the Federal Reserve System, it is important to acknowledge what happened to the presidents who opposed it. Here's how it works, the Treasury Department issues the currency. Then you when the Treasury Department issues a promissory note to the Federal Reserve, which then issues currency, there is interest on the note. This is how the debt increases every year, as we spend more money than we generate. Let me explain how tax payments work. I couldn't believe it in the beginning, but it's absolutely true. When you fill out your taxes and send a check to one place and the tax form to another, the check goes directly to the Federal Reserve. They then take that check and send it to the United Kingdom. The UK banksters keep 40% of the check, and the remaining 60% is sent to the Jesuits in the Vatican. This is what's happening to our tax dollars. One important question to consider is how our government is being funded. It appears that we are funding it through the sale of drugs, which are grown in Afghanistan. Prior to the war in Afghanistan, there were no poppy fields there, but now we are selling the drugs that are being produced there. It is surprising that with all the advanced technology we have, including satellites, we are unable to locate these poppy fields. This is not a good arrangement as it seems that a majority of the money collected by the IRS ends up going to the Vatican, with the remaining 40% going to the United Kingdom. In the year 1200, the King of England borrowed a significant amount of money from the Vatican to fund wars. To repay the debt, he signed a treaty agreeing to repay the money to the Vatican. Unfortunately, he couldn't keep up with the payments, which put him in trouble. In 1812, the Capitol building was burned down, and we had to pay war reparations to the United Kingdom ever since. There is a theory that suggests Lincoln, during the Civil War, financed it by issuing greenbacks directly without involving bankers. However, this was never communicated to the general public. It is also believed that JFK had planned to sign a memo to erase the compounding of interest on the U.S. debt. However, this memo was never signed and JFK was assassinated. He was planning to address our currency issue directly through the Treasury Department. However, he was assassinated just 11 days after signing that memo. These bankers are determined to keep us in debt, but their efforts are failing because we have alerted all the countries of the world. I have written to the ambassadors of these countries numerous times, including those in Washington and New York. I sent a letter to them a few months ago, in which I informed them that their ambassadors were being blackmailed when they attempted to dismiss Paul Wolfowitz. It is embarrassing that the American public is unaware of this situation, and the media is not reporting the truth. I would appreciate it if you could explain further about the point you mentioned earlier. You mentioned that 60% of our tax dollars are allocated to the Vatican. Can you clarify this statement? I think for a lot of people out there, it's pretty astounding to learn that the Jesuits, who are often thought of as an order of meek and humble men, are caught up in such a controversy with the Vatican. 
especially considering that we now have Pope Francis, who is the very first Jesuit Pope. It begs the question, what is their worldview and why would they be involved in such a situation? Are they trying to amass a stupendous amount of wealth, or are they just a bunch of maniacs? What is your perception of the whole situation with the Jesuits and the Vatican? I am sorry to inform you that there are individuals who are using the Catholic faith to commit crimes. However, please know that this has nothing to do with the Catholic faith itself or the people who follow it. There are some individuals who wear the garb of priests to conceal their criminal acts. It's crucial to understand that these individuals are not Catholics, but rather criminals who are using the Catholic faith as a disguise. Unfortunately, some of these individuals occupy high positions within the church, and this has been documented. I have been working with people who have documented this for a very long time. You can read what our founding fathers had to say about the Jesuits. After Lincoln was assassinated, the Jesuits were not allowed certain privileges in the United States. That ban on the Jesuits was lifted by Ronald Reagan, unfortunately. To learn more about this information contact us at glgse7en at gmail free yourself today. We're excited to provide you with access to the most up-to-date technology and research that have successfully helped numerous individuals in the past. We're confident that they can do the same for you. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions or concerns. We highly recommend reviewing our information packet, which contains cutting-edge and proven knowledge. We believe that access to this information is important for everyone, and we encourage you to share it with your friends and family.